What's going on, Reef Builders? I'm Jake Adams, and I'm back with a long-awaited update on a very special project that we worked together for you all right before Christmas. And this is the Red Sea Max Nano that we built in one day and documented every aspect of this aquarium as much as we could all in one day. So um, it's right at the two month mark as of uh, shooting this video. I have not put my hand in this tank. I repeat, I have not so much as put my hands in this tank since this tank was set up. And even I'm a little bit surprised, um, but I, there are a couple small, pre-issues are starting to develop because I haven't put my hand in the tank. Um, it's been about two months. There was no diatom bloom. There was no cycling per se. You know, I added live-ish sand, rock, and uh, Microbacter Start XLM, and uh, added fish and corals right away. And, uh, you know, from what you can see, it does not seem like there was really any substantial issues. Um, so this is what the tank looks like, basically, in normal operation. Um, again, <laughs> I don't know what else to say, just haven't really done much. It is running on the bluer side. Um, the corals have settled in pretty nicely. I'll have to splice in some video of what this tank looked like uh, when it was first set up. But yeah, just as a reminder, it's the Red Sea Max Nano. It's got a built-in protein skimmer in the back. This is the reef -led 50 water and uh yeah all the corals the corals are fine the corals are totally fine it's a little bit blue right now but i'm gonna switch it to um, more daylight spectrum uh a little bit further down the video so uh the soft corals on the side have really really opened up super well um that Duncan at the top, you know, he's happy sometimes and other times he's just kind of sitting there and man, it's too bad that that polyp, that long polyp leather right there is actually closed up because most of the time it's fully open. And then the uh, green polyp leather right there, he definitely needs um, a little bit more water flow. Um, but one thing I wanted to do is definitely address some of the uh, very strongly worded questions and comments because they're all pretty valid. Um, but as you can see, two months later with no fancy tricks, no deliberate cycling, this tank is fine. I'd, if there's anything wrong with this tank, it's maybe uh, I just kind of ran with the original uh, default programming of the Red Sea Reef Lead 50 and um, it was a little bit too bright, but um, I'll get back to that. So um, let me switch it to a more daylight spectrum so you can see the definition of these corals a little bit better. I'm gonna point out a couple of the uh, uh, small minor issues that are starting to creep up in this tank that you expect to encounter pretty much in, at any point when you're setting up a reef tank. All right, so here is the Red Sea Max Nano that uh, got set up all in one day. Sand, rock, corals, and fish. No deliberate cycle. And I have done nothing to this particular aquarium. I have not put my hand into it, but about once a week, I am uh, using this glass uh, algae scraper here to just remove a very thin, thin fin algae. So um, let us give a little round up to the corals that we have. There's a nice little gold torch right there. A little cluster of brains. The green hammer is doing good. The the uh, trachophilia, I think um, I made a slight mistake by doing the default settings because the Red Sea Reef LED has a ultraviolet colored moonlight. So it was getting just like ultraviolet light all night and um, it was actually uh, starting to bleach and then kind of, I caught it before it got bad. And that's actually one of the most important lessons from this tank. <laughs> it's easy to start up the reef tank and it can take a few months before any of the um, real problems can arise. So we're going to point some out. So one thing I'd like to, uh, for you guys to really notice is uh, several of my frags actually came with some free Valonia. Try to clean some of that off. 
um, before putting them in the tank and I know I didn't get it all. So it's, if it grows slowly, it's actually really easy to remove by hand. Um, but in a tank that's small, it could actually be worth putting some emerald crabs in here. So the Valonia is something I'm going to have to manage and there's a lot of it in there in this tank. So uh, not in this tank, in this candy coral. So I'm probably going to uh, do a two prong uh, attack of adding some emerald crabs to eat some of the small ones and then adding some Brightwell razor to uh, eliminate some of that undesirable algae. But this is one of the corals that really has grown quite well here. Oh, and the fish, the mocha storms. Mocha storms are just absolutely lovely. They greet me every single day. All right, now what else do we have going on? So um, along with the Volonia, and again, this is one of the pests that will be eradicated in the future of reef keeping. Um, this green start polyp frag, you can see where the polyps are closed up. There's a nice little starter Aptasia polyp right there. And I'm going to kill that guy on camera and show you how. There's probably a little bit more. Yeah, I kind of expected there to be a little bit more. Sometimes you don't see the whole anemone, but you'll see it's tentacles. Um, not super worried about a little bit of this uh, brown sargassium algae here on the side of um, this acan, this orange acan. Um, here you can kind of get a much better look at the, the, uh, the bologna kind of building up in this aquarium. This is a ragworm that somehow made its way into the tank on day one, writing some corals. And uh, interestingly, this is the only spot that's uh, built up a little bit of diatoms. You can see some of the Volonia there kind of shedding a little bit. And what else we have? Yeah, the Volonia, it'll sneak up on you, but you know, when it's big, it's kind of easy to remove. And I thought I had something else. Oh yeah. Um, so a little bit of diatom, just kind of barely starting here on the gravel. And a little bit more concern is this uh, green hair algae. So I'm actually gonna manually remove that hair algae and some of the most egregious Valonia. Um, but I am going to add some, uh, some emerald crabs and some uh, Brightwell Aquatics razor because that's supposed to straight up kill that style of algae. So again, I haven't um, really done anything to this tank other than clean the glass, feed the fish, um, do a tiny bit of manual top off and look at it. Spend a lot more time looking at it. So I am not even using the built-in little two liter uh, top off jobby um, that comes with this with a float valve. My main ATO is this glass top. There's a tiny section right here so I can feed, but the glass top just prevents evaporation from happening in the first place and keeps it a lot more stable and steady because um, this is kind of a small tank. Um, what are some other things I'd like to point out? Yeah, we're gonna add some emerald crabs. This tank is due for a little water change, just the, the habitual water change, I guess you could say. Um, but all right, I'm going to set this up on a tripod and then answer some of your questions that were specifically about this tank. Okay, so what I've done is I've just grabbed some screenshots of um, a lot of the questions that I got um, probably on part three, four, and five around the time that uh, certain questions should have been answered. John Vidbozo says, I usually like your videos. Were you extremely rushed when you made this one? Several times you make the point to measure cylinder accurately, but then don't talk about the correct values. Um, yes. Yes, putting together a series like this in five parts, trying to remember everything we want to tell you, everything that's important is, it's rushing to try to get it done in one day while telling you everything at the same time. Um, this is the first time we've done this, so I think what I'll be able to do the next time I kind of do like a one day tank build series, um, I'll be able to kind of go through and maybe hit on some of these points uh, a little bit more clear. It definitely, you know, we're doing so many takes while we're doing these videos that I don't really redo a take if just one little thing is off, like the seawater was at 30.5. Um, speaking of which, that is the water that we used for this tank and I have not added any more water to the aquarium except for fresh water. And um, as it evaporated down, it made it to 34 parts per thousand, y'all. Um, 
So that's, that's, that was actually a common thing, a common comment from several of you. 30.5 PPT is pretty low. Why not shoot for natural sea levels at 35 parts per thousand, said Daniel Polson. Um, this thing, when it evaporates all the way down in this back chamber with the return pump, um, it gets up to 35 parts per thousand. And there's a lot more danger, or a lot more harm, it seems, uh, to the reef animals when the salinity goes above 35 than it goes below 35. So right now, this tank is hovering between 33.5 parts per thousand up to 35 parts per thousand when it's all the way down. And you might say, well, why not use an auto top off? Well, I just don't want to. I can just add a four liter pitcher of water to this tank about once every two or three weeks. Like it's so little work with this glass top that's preventing evaporation. Okay, so Bobby Goatsy asked, can someone explain about the coral not needing a cycle tank? So uh, cycling comes to us from fish keeping, keeping fish. And fish have blood, blood have red blood cells, red blood cells have hemoglobin. It's that iron compound that gets polluted by ammonia molecules that prevents them from, uh, prevents fish from being able to take up oxygen. It's kind of like being drunk except worse. Uh, so nitrite will do the same thing, but it won't do damage to the hemoglobin molecule, whereas ammonia will. Ammonia will damage that molecule, um, the oxygen carrying, transporting molecule in your blood. And I think that's enough science for one day. Um, but as you know, corals don't have hearts. They barely have tissues. They don't have organs. They don't have blood. They don't have hemoglobin. Therefore, I, can't, I still cannot find a mechanism whereby uh, the corals can be harmed by an uncycled aquarium. I'm sure if you got the ammonia high enough, there would be some other consequences of having that high ammonia. Asler said, what are your settings on the Refled 50? Now I made one, well I made plenty of mistakes, but one avoidable mistake that I made when I first set up this tank is I used the default lighting. Um, I used the third one, whichever one is the hyper blue one, the bluest one, because that's what you want. You want less par, less algae feeding par light, um, especially when you're starting a tank and it's getting balanced out. And a tank like this is not going to be used for acros who are, and shallow water corals who are used to a lot more energy, who could therefore take the ultraviolet light. This is going to be a tank for like lower energy, uh, easier to keep LPS corals and soft corals, which don't like a lot of ultraviolet light. I would like to know how you attach the corals to the rock as I want half fish in there for a couple of months. How do you feed them? Um, again, Feeding corals is nice and it's romantic and if you want to grow, grow, grow corals fast, yeah, you want to feed them. Um, but for the most part, if you're just, you know, want to casually enjoy a, a reef aquarium, you never have to feed them. You know, that's the whole point that makes it easy is the light is the food and the organics, mostly the nitrogen and the phosphorus from the water will feed the algae, which will feed the corals. Um, if you want your girls to grow faster, definitely go learn a little bit more about coral feeding. If you have non-photosynthetic corals, you have to feed those. Um, but this is a good time to point out that in my honest opinion, what makes this tank so clean and working is I feed ridiculously little amounts of food. I might feed these fish two to three times a week, the tiniest imaginary little piece of flake food. Um, this is mostly for like the beginning of the tank, but I'm just not a heavy fish feeder to begin with. That's the whole point of having a fish aquarium where I can pound them with food and not really worry about the organics or the waste um, causing additional problems with the reef aquarium ecosystem. If I get algae growth in my fish tank, I just turn the light off, you know, turn the light off, um, keep the salinity low. And uh, so, yeah, so I've probably fed this tank about as much in two months as most of you guys would in two weeks. It is like almost an abusively low level of food. But as you see, the fish all have good weight. They're all fine. I'm sure they could benefit from a little extra feeding, but especially in newer tanks and smaller tanks, I'm a very, very uh, light feeder. Um, so Johnny Jones says, how do you get on with chemical warfare with those softies with the LPS? Run carbon 24-7? Um, the chemical warfare uh, aspect of keeping gr various groups of corals together has been wildly overblown. Um, the 
uh, allelopathic or the harmful compounds that soft corals produce are very well documented in science and they're being used in research for um, pharmaceutical use. But no one can tell me what that looks like in an aquarium. Sure, if you have a tank that has, you know, 30 gallons of soft coral in a 50 gallon tank and you have a couple acros in there, they might not be thrilled. But the chemical warfare aspect, um, I believe is only effective at a very short range. So it's pretty much like the soft coral kind of touching another coral and just kind of releasing those compounds in that area. But, um, but your rock will absorb a little bit of everything. Your sand will absorb a little bit of everything. Protein skimmers definitely gonna pull some of that out. But long story short, I can't tell you what that really looks like. You know, I can't look at a tank and be like, oh man, their soft corals are really pissing off your stony corals. We just, we just don't know that. Um, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Not until there's like almost no rock to see. All right, um, question of the first diatom bloom. Should reefers just wait it out or actively scrub and brush rocks to get rid of it? What's the best way to handle it? Oh man, I wish there was a good answer for this one, but there isn't, there really isn't. Um, in my case, I would say keep the light as dim as possible, um, you know, to handle the, to illuminate the corals, feed a ridiculously low amount. Um, but to be honest, like I don't know any of my friends experienced or otherwise who've, who've had diatom blooms, who have, thought of something, who have figured us a fix, who have come up with a fix. Um, there's a lot of hypotheses about there and some products out there that supposedly do it. I am fortunate that that's not something that I experience very much. And that's maybe because like I don't put that much rock, don't put that much sand. Um, and I keep bio loads of everything super low and feed very, very lightly. So um, I don't have a good answer for you on that one. So keep up the research. Uh, Matt's Reef, eh, no cycling for corals? I respectfully disagree. See, see my comments about um, hemoglobin uh, a few minutes earlier. All right, I am enjoying the series a lot, says Miguel Reef. If you do begin adding trace elements, please can you do it step by step exactly how you did it and with what products? Thanks. Um, I am not planning on adding almost anything to this aquarium. Uh, these are moderate light corals in a medium energy environment. There's not that many of them. Um, I don't plan to be dosing this tank, I don't think ever. It's just gonna be so much easier to do big water changes. And by big water changes on this tank, which is what this is gonna get next, I'm, I'm just gonna change that two buckets. Make sure those are the proper salinity and those are coming probably from one of my reef tanks where I already know the parameters are perfect and the water's warm, um, all that. But for a tank, you know, up to about 30 gallons, you really gotta make, you know, do that uh, reasoning yourself. Is it really worth setting up a doser, adding all kinds of elements and, and things to the water? Um, do you want your corals to grow that fast? Or do you wanna stand back, sit back a little bit and just enjoy the tank, watch the corals grow at a natural, normal pace, and um, just kinda of let them absorb some of the nutrients from the fish food, however lightly. But um, once you get to, to a larger tank, it doesn't make sense to change as much water. So for this particular aquarium, I'm not planning on adding any doser. I'm still not planning on doing an ATO. I'm just gonna do water changes, which will probably come at an interval of about four to six weeks. So we're right at two months, or like eight weeks now. Um, so this tank could use it, but if you look at the tank, it just, there's no indications that there's a, a wild, out of control amount of algae going on in this tank. All right, um, similar question. With this new tank, do you have to dose it with coral food or calcium? Uh, no, I haven't put my hand in the tank. I have scraped the glass a few times, feed the fish a little bit, add a little bit of uh, water every two to three weeks, and about less often than you would have to top off the top off. Um, so no, not gonna do that. Um, reef builders, will you be giving updates on this tank? Said Eddie Baker.
Hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, how would it all work if you wanted to do a nano or small tank without gravel? Uh, said Matt Prinsloo the same exact way. Um, you might have a little bit less buffer from having all of that biologically seeded um, gravel, but it'll pretty much be the same. Like, I don't, wouldn't really wouldn't stress it. Um, maybe wouldn't have added the fish exactly right away. That's, I would have let the biology kind of build up on the surfaces of the tank and the rock a little bit more. Um, so that's about it. Maybe just wait a few days or a week before adding any fish. APN Films asks, are glass tops bad to use? No, they are very, very handy, very useful. Um, another one of those old wives' tales that just doesn't really apply to tanks like this. If you have a big tank and you're trying to grow a lot of stony corals and you're trying to keep your pH up, having everything super sealed is going to keep carbon dioxide you know, in contact with your water, which is going to drop your pH. But we don't care about the tank. This is just a pretty tank to look at. It's going to keep it warm. It might keep it a little bit too warm in the summertime, so that's a temperature thing. But now for me, it means the heater comes on less and it evaporates less. So glass tops are actually pretty awesome. Um, all right, so back to ATF in the house. If you add clowns first, aren't you likely to limit what you can put in next? Do aquacultured fish just that designer clowns even need to be quarantined? Yes, you are correct. Um, adding the clowns is going to limit what I can add next, but I really am not planning on adding any more fish to this tank. If I did, they would be small little gobies, little trimmas or watchman gobies, little tiny fish that just don't get on the radar of clownfish. Um, or, or just kind of hang out down the bottom near the sand. Um, this would be a fun tank for little Kobe. So uh, we'll see if one catches my attention. Um, so yeah, it does limit what I can add. I couldn't add a damselfish. I probably couldn't add too much else besides these orange mollies that I have going on in here. Um, but once again, I'm like not planning on adding too much more to this tank. But if you have a larger tank and you add big junky clowns first, um, yeah, that is gonna have some issues down the road. Um, the other question was, should you quarantine Quarantine, dot dot dot. The answer is yes. The answer is always yes. You should quarantine everything. So many times that I get in trouble, it's because I think I know. It's because I think I know that coral's clean. It's because I think I know that fish is clean. If you are getting fish direct, direct from a breeding facility, they really, really should not have any diseases. But there's nothing wrong with just kind of putting them in a observation tank. Uh, where you can just watch them for a couple days and see if anything breaks out. Um, if they're designed a clown through the fish store, absolutely, absolutely. Even if they didn't put them in the same system, they might've used the same nets or cups or just little drips of water. Um, if you're getting captive bred clowns from a fish store, unless they have a dedicated system where they only put that stuff in, which I know places like Live Aquaria do, they put all the captive bred fish in one system uh, to keep them nice and clean. Um, but yeah, so long story short, should you quarantine dot, 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 the answer is always always yes. Um, okay, I think that's about it for this tank. Um, I need to manage some Valonia, uh, kill that Aptasia, uh, do a water change. The protein skimmer has like this much schemate in it, so it's really not hurting that much. And I'm gonna start dosing a little bit the uh, Brightwell Aquatics Razor, which has a very similar effect to Vibrant as far as eliminating hair algae, which I have experienced, and Valonia, which I have not yet seen for myself, but I really like to. So. Um, Thank you guys for joining me on this uh, little update on the Red Sea Max Nano 20 gallon uh, one day setup tank. I am personally still surprised that it looks this good um, with so little maintenance, but now it's time to get my hands in there and just do a little shuffling and uh, uh, start treating a couple of these things. So. Um, thanks for tuning in. If you want to see more updates on this tank, make sure to subscribe. Hopefully I've answered more questions than I've uh, brought up and you guys have a little bit more uh, reasoning for why certain things were done this way. And I will take a little bit more time doing future uh, tank build series videos, especially of the all-in-one nature. So um, uh, it's really fun to be uh, in the groove of making videos for you guys again. I hope you guys are enjoying them and I will catch you guys on a future episode. Peace.